when selecting a new fountain pen, it's super fun to shop around and finally find the one that really speaks to you. And then you get to shop for that perfect ink. Mm. But don't forget the third part of the fountain pen trifecta, paper. It's not as bright, maybe not as fun, maybe not as flashy as pens and ink. However, it is just as important. Hi, my name is Drew Brown. I'm here at the Goulet Pen Company, and I would love it if you would join me as we discuss why paper matters for your fountain pen. We are going to look at how different inks perform on different types of paper. I've got three inks here in these pens, Noodler's 54th Massachusetts, Lamy Black, and Noodler's Apache Sunset. While all three are modern, currently produced, water-based fountain pen inks, they perform quite differently on paper, and we're gonna see. I also have two different types of paper here with me today. Clairefontaine Triumph 90 GSM paper, wonderful for fountain pens, a beautiful paper. And then a Mead three-subject notebook that you would find in your local drugstore. Not necessarily made for fountain pens, but something very, very common and accessible. So as I mentioned before, the fountain pen trifecta is the pen, the ink, and the paper. Today, we're just to be focusing on the ink and the paper. So for the pens, I have them in three of the same pens with the same nibs. My goal isn't to get into the manufacturing differences about why is one paper does this thing and the other paper does that thing, or why ink does this or does that. And it's definitely not to say one ink is better, one paper is better. They're just different. And the combination can be different. So specifically today, I'm just going to show you what it looks like when certain combinations happen. Specifically, we're going to be looking at how different types of ink absorb into different types of paper at different speeds. Let's start off with Noodler's 54th Massachusetts. This ink dries notoriously fast, which means it soaks into the paper fibers quickly. An ink that dries super fast can create some serious feathering. You can definitely see that these papers both are having a really tough time with this ink. Noodler's 54th, as I said, soaks into paper really quickly. So the Mead paper is really just sucking it up like a sponge. But the Triumph paper isn't immensely better. This is a pretty unstoppable ink. So it just goes to show you that no matter how good your paper might be, there are always inks that, is, that are going to give it a hard time. Noodler's Apache Sunset is a stunningly beautiful and perhaps the most popular fountain pen ink in this shade, but it takes forever to dry. On a super smooth, high quality paper like Triumph, the dry time is gonna be much longer than on something like the Mead Notebook. With paper like this, shading, sheen, and shimmer are going to be more visible but smearing is gonna be more of an issue. But one of the most striking things and why I picked this ink was because on non-absorbent paper, this ink does something called shading. And you can see some of that on the Clairefontaine Triumph where it's pooling, you get a dark orange where you're just using normal strokes, you know, moving left to right, etc. You get that lighter orange. However, when you have a super absorbent ink like the Mead paper we have here, you can see that it's a much more flat, much more consistent, color because the ink isn't having time to pool and create that shading effect. It gets soaked up immediately upon contact with the paper and gives a very uniform color with some feathering. Okay, moving on to Lamy Black. Now this is a pretty average ink, pretty middle of the road formulation with no properties that are noticeable. And as you can see, it's middle of the road on both the Triumph and the Mead paper. There's a little bit of feathering on the Mead paper. While it's not feathering nearly as much as 54th Massachusetts did, you will see that the lines on the Mead notebook paper appear to be a bit thicker than the lines on the Triumph paper. And while it's not feathering and looking really awful, it can create a spread, which gives the appearance of a thicker line. None of these inks are better than the other, and honestly, the paper's pretty subjective as well. No ink or paper is perfect for every possible combination, but paper most definitely matters, as you can see. So if you experience any of the things we saw today, don't overlook the role paper is playing in your writing experience. If you have an ink that you are just really, really in love with, you might need to focus on finding a paper that it plays nicely with. Or if you're at work or at school and you can't really control the type of paper you're using, keep playing around with different inks until you find one that works well with what you got. 
Ultimately, it's all about finding the right combination that works for you. And I hope this video helped you out a little bit with that. Keep in mind, our team here at GoulayPens.com is ready, willing, and able to help answer your questions. So if you are lost and you are having a hard time finding your right combination, let us know and we can help. Also, we've got a YouTube channel. It's got plenty of stuff on there. If you'd like to avail yourself of more videos, like, comment, subscribe, and you can get more of that. In addition, obviously our store at Goulet Pens will have tons of pen, ink, and paper options for you. One of the best things to do would probably to go and check out our ink samples. That's a great way to try a bunch of inks really affordably and without filling your home with ink. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a great day. Right on.